What does it mean? What does it mean? It means that whenever 100 ml blood passes through the peripheral tissue which is resting, on average, it picks up how much carbon dioxide from the tissue? 4 ml. It picks up? 4 ml. Is that right? So now we can say, because of course, it, here it is 48 and now it is becoming 52. It's worth repeating that when we are talking about carbon dioxide transport, of course, carbon dioxide is transported through the blood. We must talk about the pressures. We must talk about the volumes. And later on, I will talk about the forms in which different forms of transportation of carbon dioxide. Right? So, on arterial side, it is 40 pressure. And here it becomes 46. And uh, amount of or content of carbon dioxide in 100 ml of the arterial blood is 48. And on the venous side, it becomes 52. No problem up to here? Okay. Just for Rivian purpose, because you must avoid the video of the transport of oxygen. If we compare oxygen, what is the pressure of oxygen here? I just want to see how good, so that you don't confuse oxygen with the carbon dioxide. So in one diagram I'm integrating. So partial pressure of oxygen on arterial side is normally how much? 97 millimeter of mercury or for your personal convenience, you can say 100 millimeter of mercury and international literature will agree with you. It's very near to the real. Partial pressure of oxygen on arterial side is 97 or 100 millimeter of mercury. Partial pressure of oxygen on venous side is 40. What? Millimeter of mercury. Now please, why I deliberately put this value? This is oxygen. Oxygen is 40 on venous side. Is that right? partial pressure of oxygen but partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 on arterial side is that right and in your mind you have to compare arterial and venous oxygens in a different way and in a different your section you should compare the carbon dioxide now content of oxygen in a person who has 15 15 grams of hemoglobin right not polycythemic not anemic, is that right? He has how much uh, oxygen content under the pressure of 97? It is about 20 ml, is that right? 20 ml per dl. And again compare here, that what is the oxygen content on venous side? Yes please, 15 ml per 100 ml. It means that you have to compare that carb oxygen comes to the tissue under the pressure of 97, right, uh, and 100 ml blood containing 20 ml of oxygen, when it is passing through the systemic capillaries, it delivers how much oxygen? 5 ml. And simultaneously, it is picking up how much carbon dioxide? 4 ml. Now you understand why it makes a sense, right, that every minute, right, 100 ml blood passing through your resting tissue, delivering 5 ml of oxygen, picking up? 4 ml of carbon dioxide. Is that right? And please, when you do the multiple choice questions or you see the patient's report, don't confuse the values related with the oxygen with the values related with carbon dioxide because some house students find it very easy and rather luxurious to mix them up without feeling even what they are doing. Right? Let's come back to our business that is carbon dioxide transport. So carbon dioxide enters from arterial side under the pressure of 40 millimeter of mercury while every 100 ml of the blood is carrying 48 ml of carbon dioxide already, right? And every minute 4 ml carbon dioxide is added to the 100 ml blood passing through the capillaries. Is that right? Now, question is that this 4 ml which is added over here, this is this 4 ml. 4 ml of carbon dioxide. How it is really transported? I've already mentioned all of that cannot be transported in the gaseous form. Right? You have to keep it dissolved. And if you keep it all dissolved, you need very high pressures. So all of that even cannot be transported into dissolved form. So what really happens? Let me explain. The major role in transport of carbon dioxide is produced by RBCs. Major role is played by RBCs. Average student knows RBCs are bringing oxygen, hemoglobin is bringing oxygen, 
above every student knows, and I will explain what are the mechanisms, hemoglobin also helps in transportation of carbon dioxide back. It helps there. It plays a big role. By the way, what are the functions of hemoglobin? Just tell me four functions of hemoglobin, not more than that. Right? Two, I will tell you. One function is oxygen transport. Other function is carbon dioxide transport. Remaining two, you will tell me. Functions of hemoglobin. Yes. You are going to tell me the functions of hemoglobin. It is laughing at you. Why you are not telling? It has how many functions? Yes. One is oxygen transport. Right? Every student knows that. Okay. He is too much laughing. No one answering. Yes. Then, second is carbon dioxide transport. It helps in that, of course. We'll talk now how hemoglobin, what's the role of hemoglobin. What else hemoglobin is doing? Don't tell me it makes color of the blood red. Of course it does, but that is not a real function of it. What is the special function of it? Oh my God. You have studied biochemistry? I think you will study that after steps. You'll get free. Yes, someone who has studied the biochemistry. What are the functions of protein? There are many functions of protein. Hemoglobin has some very special function. It acts as a buffer protein. In the blood, if there are more protons, you know protons are very nasty molecules. These molecules are very, very nasty. They are highly reactive. They can damage DNA. They can damage cell membranes, they change the pH to acidic form. And if there are too much proton free in the blood, they will make a lot of acidosis. And under acidic situation, your enzymes don't work and body functions will fail. So it is very important to manage these monkeys. And these monkeys are caught by many mechanisms. One of the mechanisms are plasma proteins, including hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has special area. This is a molecule of hemoglobin. You remember hemoglobin was having globin chains. And globin chains must be made of amino acid. Some of the amino acid are having negative charge. And they love to hook these monkeys. Is that right? It's a very important function of the hemoglobin. That hemoglobin provides some areas on the surface of hemoglobin which are negatively charged areas where protons can bind reversibly. What is the advantage? If I'm the hemoglobin, okay, Francisco, you can come here. Let's suppose he's proton and there's one more proton there. Okay, this is one proton and there's another proton coming. Okay, big proton. <laughs> no, okay. So less than big proton. Just come. Hurry up. Now listen. What is happening? That let's suppose that we are having I'm the plasma protein or I'm hemoglobin molecule. Right? Of course, one function is that transport the oxygen to the tissue. Other is I'm bringing the carbon dioxide back. I will discuss in detail. Another special function is that what is this? Special areas on the hemoglobin or other plasma protein and these areas can grab protons and keep them under control. It catches the protons, don't allow them to be naughty with the other tissues, right? These protons which bind with the hemoglobin or bind with the plasma proteins, they are not free. And when they are not free, they are not free to change the pH significantly. In this way, hemoglobin holds extra protons, right? Whenever extra protons are produced, to some extent it can catch them and hold them and they are no more disturbing our pH significantly. And if due to some reason, if in the plasma fluid protons become less, there's a tendency for alkalosis, hemoglobin will release the monkeys. Go and